first. I make up sliding down your face, skirt riding up your leg. So I sat there like a princess on the ripped leatherette and delved into a pocket for the envelope. You say to a woman you are sharing what feels like the longest elevator ride of your life with, wondering if and hoping that you will remember anything that happened in the last endless half an hour. I had already puked some spittle and a clear as yet unidentifiable liquid. What goes up must come down. The evening started off well enough. I tried another pocket for the envelope. The bar flashed, and the floor smelt of beer and warm piss. Is an Andrea Feldman look tonight. And if being fucked up was good enough for her, it was good enough for you. I'd already puked some spittle and a clear as yet unidentifiable liquid. A drink, a drink, another drink, and you're sparkling, never out of anything to say, stumbling like any proper hussy in hooker heels, enjoying the look you put into everybody's eyes. So I stumbled onto the sidewalk and tumbled out the contents of my bag, and with the grace of a rhino, plastered myself against the wall. Amazement, fear, desire, all commingled together. Another drink, a few hits off that joint, and everything starts slowing down. down, down. Oh, not this. Not fucking this. And if it hadn't been for my lack of mascara, the tears may have seemed almost genuine, so I scattered the contents even further. You say to no one in particular on receiving and forgetting some silent revelation. I should have put the fucking bag on my head and pretended it was a Philip Tracy. Maybe even at an angle. What was that? And then it all becomes a slow, interesting blur. Did I say that? Or did I think that? Never mind. I'm Andrea Feldman tonight. Off her head and head. Is it acid? Is it acid? Is it acid? And then you find yourself in the back of a yellow taxi and you realize for the first time in your life how horribly, how terribly fast cars actually travel. And what if you ended up in a car wreck now? Jaws of life ripping you from the back of a yellow taxi. Scissors cutting you from your red fishnet. So go on. Stick your head out the window. Breathe in the cool night air and puke your guts up. Liquor. Who cares? No one sees you anyway. I didn't even take a bow. Just trudged home, less in shame, more silently guilty of a guileless performance. Sometimes, this is the price you have to pay for being so beautiful. So that was a piece called Messy Lady, which um, I wrote about 10 years ago with another artist in New York called Brandon Olson. And um, this, is, this next piece is called Messy Lady Part Two, and it involves a set change and a costume change. So I thought, because it's, how oh, are we all right? So because it's, because, it's, because it's Ted and it is a talk, I thought I will kind of like talk a tiny, weeny, tiny, you know, just a little tiny, weeny bit. And um, I just had a thought when I saw, um, I don't know if he's still in the room, the um, lovely gentleman who gave that wonderful speech about happiness. And it made me think about happiness and beauty and how in happiness we're always in flux and we kind of go from being happy to being kind of generally happy, being a little bit unhappy, being you know, ecstatic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. As an artist, I don't know if you have other artists in the room, um, 
Happiness can be one of the worst things that can ever happen in your life as part of the creative process. And I think if you are an artist, you will know that sometimes you have to plunge deep, deep, deep down and really plunder the ugly places in order to create what you hope will be considered beautiful and sometimes radical. You can think about that in your own time. <laughs> Shall I tell you, I'm a little bit dry. Does anyone have a drink? I do, I do. What, what, have, you, what have you got, what have you got, what have you got? What? Oh, no, 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 Petrol, maybe. Or something thick like oil that refracts light that dare pass through it with an olive off-round, grayish-green, bobbing, rotating, clasping to it this oil. In a V-like receptacle, clasped by a cracked hand, the cracks magnified by the light that dare pass through it. Mauve lips, cracked, smeared with a reddish grease, approach and kiss the glass. Vapors. Vapors emanating from this globulous liquid, this petrol, this perfume, each the same. Thin lips suck either into the mauvish funnel of the mouth, whilst heavy eyelids riddled with spidery lashes bat, and an obese orb on a fat gold ring sounds a decisive thud against the bar, marking the movement from mouth to throat of this oil, lubricating her awkward engine. Thank you. Stay away from me because I'm in my sin. Stay away from me, everybody, because I'm in my sin. If this joint gets raided, somebody give me my gin. Ooh, Manhattan. If I was there now, I'd be drinking one of those, I suppose, but me and Bourbon have never gotten on, and I too find a cherry and a cocktail rather ghost, don't you? Don't bruise it! Don't bruise the gin. To think that something with such punch could bruise so easily is a bit like me, I suppose, isn't it? Go and ask me the question. How long should one stir the perfect martini for until it's cold, of course? And to go with, one's accompaniment should always be thin and white. Not you, darling. I'm talking about my cigarette. Would you like one? Oh, by the way, pour a few more. What for you? No, people, this is all mine, yeah? Don't try me, nobody. Cause you'll never win. I said, don't try me, nobody, because you'll never win. We'll fight the army and the American Navy. Somebody give me my chin. When I'm feeling high, I've nothing to do. What do you mean, me? I know exactly what I'm talking about. When I'm feeling high, I've nothing to do. You and me, darling, both know how this evening ends and it's in my bed. Woo, just fill me full of good liquor and I'll be good to you. Someone's getting on my nerves. Show me a good legger. I'll show you a Oh, sweetie, darling, isn't it wonderful that I'm here? Show me a good legger. I'll show you a pal. Put that face down, there's gin in it, it's going down my throat, fill me full of good liquor. Oh, what is it? Oh, go on then. If you must, you can buy me a drink. Twist me arm. Oh. What? I'll do anything. I hate you. I hate parties! Go on then. In the eye. Right in the eye. Take off my red stiletto shoe and plunge it right in my eye. 
gouge out the eyeball until you can feel the bloody red tears pouring down my face. Oh, go on, what do you do now? What's wrong? Drinking out the bottle? Last night, darling, you were drinking straight out the gasoline pump. And right now, gin and gasoline taste exactly the same. You know the routine. Hand. Bottle. Lift it. Smell it. Kiss. Suck. Swallow. Doesn't that just take the feeling of that stiletto in your eye away? She's back! Stay away from me because I'm in my sin. I said, stay away from me, baby, because I'm in my sin. Just fill me full of good liquor. And baby, give me my... Oh, come on, just give me my, somebody give me my, cheers.